All right, put that there, put that there. We've got those laid out because we're going to talk fishing today, guys. A little 2020 action. It's where I'm going to break down the last tournament. The last one, which was so much fun. Mississippi River, Upper Mississippi, right there in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I mean, we finished up the season in one of my favorite places ever. It really fits my style. You know, shallow grass. I love smallmouth, of course. Uh, largemouth. That whole, that whole thing, man, that is just... Really, honestly, that whole area is one of my very favorite places to fish. I hope we go back every single year. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be heading back next year. We just got the bass schedule out just a few days ago, and uh, lacrosse is not on the mix. So really what I want to do is just hang out with you guys for just a little bit. I know a lot of you love the 2020s. It's where I get to break down what I did right, what I did wrong, everything in between, kind of how I feel about the event. Of course, we had a great event, so there's lots of good things to talk about, but I did make some some mistakes there, some things that are bothering me a little bit. And it's one of those, it's one of those things that I just want to get it out there because hopefully, you know, it'll help you guys learn uh, not to make those mistakes, you know, because <laughs> in fishing, a lot of times you have to go through those painful moments to realize some of the things that you do. And you say to yourself, well, man, you've been fishing for over 20 years on the tournament trail. You should know all these things. And it's not that I don't know them. It's just, you kind of just, it, it's hard to keep up with it all, you know? And it's just like little things make a huge difference in fishing. And there's a couple little things that I did wrong during this event that possibly cost me the tournament. You know, Brian Schmidt won the tournament. Hats off to Brian. He's a fantastic fisherman. You know, it really fits his style too. That Potomac River, grass fishery, you know, current, you know, Potomac River has tide, of course, but you know, Mississippi River has a lot of current. I expected Brian to do well. He's done well there in the past. So uh, big thumbs up to you, Brian. And Matt Airy, of course, he did great. You know, he finished off the season with a strong season. I think he finished in the top 10 for points this year. So that's amazing. You know, Matt, Matt, Matt Matt's a pretty conservative fisherman, I would say. He's fantastic, of course, but he doesn't like to venture too far away from the ramp. I mean, he really tries to spend most of his time focused on fishing close to the ramp. He doesn't make long runs. And, uh, and, and you know, he made some of his longest runs of the year in this particular tournament. Some of the riskiest stuff he's done all year long, running up in those shallow bays and doing all the things that he did. But he had a fantastic event. And him and I fished a lot of the same water, not necessarily the same exact spot, but the same patterns. We kind of we kind of we kind of found the same little deal. Uh, you know, Canterbury had a rough tournament. Um, it was just one of those things where, you know, a few bites would have made a huge difference for, for Canterbury. He just didn't get a couple of those big three and a half to four pound fish each day that would have put him in the finals for sure. But uh, all in all, a great event. And I wanna I wanna break down some of the lures that I used, talk about some of those, those teaching moments. But before we get too far in this video, I wanna say a huge shout out and thank you to Mobile Delvac Oil. You know guys, I've been using the Mobile Delvac products in my trucks for a, quite a while now, and it's important to me, and here's why. You know, for the longest time, I thought oil was just oil. You know, let's just go get the oil changed. I never even asked when I would get my oil changed. I, just, I would just say, hey, put in, you know, 15W40, whatever. But I started doing my research, and the Mobile Delvac, here's what's neat about it. It is an oil, that is specifically made to last longer, okay? So what does that mean? For me, as many miles as I put on the Trocar Battle Wagon each year, uh, just like this, this 21 days straight, we went from South Carolina to South Dakota, back to Wisconsin, back to Florida. We put 10,000 miles on my truck, and that required an oil change. As a matter of fact, we did the oil change on the road in between South Dakota and Wisconsin, which it was time to do. But using the mobile Delvac products allows me to not have to go get my oil changed as frequent. And that, that in turn saves me time. Time's important to me. I need time on the water. We don't, you know, we, we don't have a lot of extra days in between these tournaments. So it's nice to be able to, to not have to change the oil as much by using the mobile Delvac products. So huge shout out to those guys. They make fantastic products. So here's what I'd like for you guys to do if you don't mind. They created a website, which is pretty cool. And it fit great with this whole tournament series that we're doing. Last tournament of the year, Mission Unstoppable. So they have a website called Mission Unstoppable. So we're gonna drop a link in the description down below, guys. Go check it out and it will educate you on all the different products that the Mobile Delvac's good for. Awesome stuff there. Thank you, Mobile Delvac, for sponsoring this video, and we're going to move on. All right, now we're going to talk a little fishing, okay? Let me tell you that it was kind of a pretty simple approach for me in this tournament. Shallow water, of course, grass. What's neat about the, the Mississippi River is that you have smallmouth and largemouth using the same water, which is one of the most unique things that I've ever been a part of. You know, Champlain, when you're fishing for smallmouth at Champlain, you're fishing offshore, you're fishing for smallmouth. Like, if you catch a largemouth fishing for smallmouth at Champlain, you're a little like, wow, that was kind of crazy, and vice versa. But it, on the Mississippi River, they're all in the same place. In practice, some of these shallow water places that I had been catching them, 
they were all smallmouth. I thought the first day of the tournament I was going to roll up and actually catch nothing but smallmouth. And it was completely opposite. The big smallmouth weren't biting, and all these largemouth moved in, which was fine. And I started catching them right off the bat. So let's dive into some of the lures that I use. You know, my main punch was the swim jig. This is a grass hero by Guggen Squad. I used that a lot in the three eighths and the half ounce, depending on what I was fishing and where. Got a lot of fish on that, caught a lot of fish on a Carolina rig, and even on this little modified swim bait we'll talk about here in a minute as well. But the swim jig is really what probably caught most of my fish uh, in the mornings. I'd catch a lot of them. But you know, I, you talk about mistakes. I, I made a mistake, and after watching the videos uh, of me fishing, which is a good thing to do, I, I'm starting to notice what I did wrong. And what I did wrong was I'm fishing 15 pound P line fluorocarbon and make a long cast out when I'd get the bite. Half the time I would just reel down real fast and lean and reel. Other times I would reel down and set the hook pretty hard. And going back and looking at the fish that I lost, mostly lost the fish, a couple of those key bites on those not so great hook sets where I would reel down and lean into them. And, and here's the problem that I think that I came into was that I fish braid a lot here in Florida on my swim jigs and I don't set the hook super hard on the braid. Uh, I, I reel down and just lean into them and that braid with no stretch and this grass kind of gets the job done. But that long cast with that fluorocarbon, even though fluorocarbon sensitive doesn't have a lot of stretch, it still has more stretch than braid. And I wasn't driving those hooks home. So right off the bat, throw up there, I hang this really good fish. It's flopping around. You're not gonna be able to tell from the video exactly how big it is, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it was four pounds or bigger. Check this out. This is the first one I lose. It cost me a lot. There's a big one right there, dude. Oh yeah. Wow, that's a real big one, guys. That is a monster. Oh my gosh, did he pull off? So that really stunk right there. I mean, that was just an unfortunate deal. The fish came off. Again, it was that, I didn't like the hook set. Long cast like that, a lot of stretch. I'm not gonna break my line. I'm not shocking the line. I need to jam that hook as hard as I can and drive that hook in there. And that's, that's what I didn't do on that very first big fish. And that hurt, you know? A four pound bite on, on the Mississippi River is a big deal. And to lose a four pound fish, you know, that cost me almost two pounds final day, you know, like for the day two pounds because I probably had a, a two five. That fish was four, four something. So almost two pound upside. You know, I had 13, seven the first day. All of a sudden, boom, I have 15, seven. You know, it's like one of those deals like that, that really, that really hurts, you know. Now, there was another fish that I lost on the Carolina rig that I want to talk about. I was Carolina rigging this dart. You know, a lot of people were talking about, you know, Carolina rigging creature baits, and I know some guys in the tournament were catching them on creature baits. I started throwing this dart, and I tell you what, I think I got more bites on this dart than I would have with a, with a creature bait. I tried in the tournament a few times. I took this off and put a creature bait on. I put a speed crawl on. I put a kraken crawl on, and I mixed it up a little bit, and I felt like I, I definitely didn't get bites on it very good. I would put this dart back on and get bit, and here's why I think it was good there because there was a lot of current. So this bait right here is free and it's kind of just, it's just kind of gliding through the current. As I pull it, it's moving around and changing directions. And it's a lot better than say, maybe a crawdad or some type of bait with moving claws. It's gonna kind of stay put behind your Carolina rig weight. Stowing it on a three quarter ounce weight. I like that heavier weight, shallow water, they're only a foot and a half to three feet of water. But I like that heavier weight and that way I can just let it sit there and let this dart kind of dart around behind that Carolina rig. And that I feel like I got a lot more bites on that. So uh, that right there is a great bait, not only to you know just cast around, but the Carolina rig, the Guggenbait dart. This was green pumpkin blue, caught a lot of fish on that. But I did lose a second big fish that first day on a Carolina rig. And here's the mistake I made on that. I threw it up there and started fighting the fish back. Well, here, take a look at this and I'll explain afterwards. There's Mike. Come on, be a big one. Be a big one. Acting a little different. Acting a little different. Oh yeah, big one, dude. Oh. 
God almighty, dude. Now, here's what happened. I tried to boat swing that fish. I thought the fish was big. I even said in the thing, it feels a little different. And then when I saw the fish, I said, oh, wow, that's a big one. So that I should have just reached down and tried to lift that fish. Why am I trying to boat swing a four, four and a half pound fish? That was another big one and it wouldn't hook good. The other thing that I made a mistake on, I boat swing a lot of fish and I'm not opposed to boat swinging a lot of fish if you are confident on where the hook is. If you can physically get an ID on the hook, okay, the hook is right there. It's all the way through you know, and you feel good about it, you can boat swing a, a pretty big fish and, and live with it. But when you don't verify where that hook is hooked, that's when you're gonna run into problems. And that's what happened. As I went to swing that fish in the boat, as he was coming out of the water or getting ready to come out of the water, I saw that hook at the last second and it was barely skin hooked in his lip. Of course, he fell off, another big fish lost. So I left four pounds on the table the first day but the good news was it gave me confidence to know that my pattern was working. I was around some bigger fish. So going into day two, I said, okay, I'm going to lip everything. I'm going to lip everything. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, I don't need to lose any big fish. And, um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Just right off the bat again on, yeah. I know the comments are coming. I'm an idiot. I get it. I'm mad at myself. Here. There he is, big one. Oh my gosh, really nice fish. Oh my gosh, real big one, dude. Real big one. Oh my. So again, another big fish, and I just was excited, and it was that spur of the moment decision just to try to swing him up in the boat, and he fell off the hook. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, it was a solid four pound fish. You know, right after that, I caught like a three and a half pounder there, and and, um, and, and anyways, it just, it cost me. I'm leaving, you know, to have those type of opportunities throughout the day uh, is, a, is a good thing, but to lose them is real bad. And so now that's three really good fish that I've dumped in, in, in a day and a half at this point. Now, I finished off the day with a really big fish late, like a four pounder, which was good. And, uh, you know, ended up, ended up catching them pretty good. Day three rolled, kind of the same thing. What was neat about the area that I was fishing up shallow is those fish kept reloading pretty well. So I could start off the morning each day catching, you know, a decent bag of fish. And then I'd roll down south and get out in that open water and start throwing swim baits around a little bit and th some worms and stuff, a little bit deeper water. And a bait that I caught them on that made a huge difference. I'll show you the video clip here in a second. It's a little modification that I've done here in Florida. Matter of fact, I caught a almost a 10 pounder here two years ago on this exact setup here on the lake. And it's it's a swim bait. This is a, a saucy swimmer. It's the big saucy swimmer. Rigged up with a 3 8 tungsten weight with a with a with a bobber stop. That's a Trocar EWG 5 aught and just making long casts with this thing and reeling it through the water. And believe it or not, this thing swims really good with this. You don't need a swim bait head, right? A swim bait head would have the hook sticking out the top, would get snagged in the grass a lot. I'd throw this bait out in that deeper grass, let it sink down and slow roll it back through that grass. And because this bait's weedless, it wouldn't get hung up and it was a big deal. So I caught a lot of fish on this bait right here. Well, let me rephrase that. I caught a couple of really good key fish, matter of fact, Take a look at this. <laughs> I was pretty excited. I think it's big, dude. I think he's real big. I mean, giant if it's a bass. Real, real big if it's a bass. Uh, bass, big bass, nice bass, nice bass. Bam, baby! First cast with a little adjustment. 
first cast with an adjustment four pounder dude they didn't even get to the bottom they didn't even get to the bottom boys Woo! look at that right there look at that's a humpback that's a mississippi humpback god that was awesome dude i threw it out there and sunk to the bottom it just was tight i was like huh Ow! dude the winning bag is right out there i'm telling you dude those are bass on the screen Woo! nice dude give me some of that that's Bassmasters Classic for sure. That's a big one. Wow. Couldn't believe it. Oh yeah. I might as well tell you. He just nice. He's just a nice one. As old Schmitty would say. He's just a nice one. Alright, that was a that was a key moment because I kept playing around with this, like trying to figure out how to get these fish to trigger. There was a lot of shad, and the reason I went to this approach is I could physically see the shad on the surface. I could see them on the panoptics from the live scope, and I could see the fish swimming around in that grass on the live scope, and it was, it was awesome. I was able to learn a lot about fishing that little bit deeper grass by using the Garmin live scope. It allowed me to know where the concentrations of fish were kind of hanging out in relation to that bait and allowed me to make some decisions and some, some adjustments like throwing this bait right here. Threw that on 17-pound line and uh, caught a couple of nice fish on that. That was a big deal. Day three, guys, I had a pretty nice bag, made it into the top 10, and Matt and I are now are in the finals, and that was cool. So, you know, started off day four, ran back out there, and I, and I didn't catch them very good in the morning. My stuff had kind of dried up, and I, I expected it to kind of dry up by day four. And I bounced around a little bit, caught a few fish, but I had found a spot in practice, and it was, one, it was just neat, you know? It was just one of these places. I went to largemouth fish, and all of a sudden, I start catching these big smallmouth in about eight feet of water along this grass edge, actually on the swim jig in practice. And there were nice ones, two and a half, three pound fish. And I've been saving that spot. I was like, you know what? I'm going to save this spot for the final day if I get into a jam where I need to catch a limb and a fish or get a few nice fish in the boat. And that'll settle me down. So at about 11 o'clock, I ran to that, that little area right there. And I was just really hoping that they would still be there, hoping there wasn't another angler sitting on them. And, uh, fired up there man and yeah we did a little spin out here take a look at some of this uh this footage this was a cool little deal and and look in the past when i've saved fish a lot of times it doesn't work out you roll up there and they've moved on or somebody's called them or something but this this saved me a little bit on on day four gave me a lot of confidence and it sure was fun check this out there's a big wad here dude i think we can catch a couple big ones here That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one right there. There we go. That's a two and a half. Just can't hardly work the bait. It's the main issue. There you go, boys. How about that? It gives us five. We gotta get rid of everything to win. But maybe we can just have a good time and get paid for it. How about that? <clears throat> oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, wow. Look at that one. Look at that one, guys. Wow. Wow. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Where you been? Where you been, man? Came here yesterday. Try to hang out. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh. Oh, another good one. Another good one, guys. Another good one. Another good one. Oh yeah. Nice fish. Oh. There we go. That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't know 
up. He's, I think he, I think he's bigger than this other one. Oh yeah. Uh, we just called up. Call action, baby. Oh, it feels pretty good, dude. I don't know, he's slipping drag. Oh yeah, nice fish. Look at that thing. That's a big old brown Sally. Golly, there, that's a nice one. Yeah. Woo. Little brown Sally. We'll take him, however. <laughs> that's crazy. Good stuff right there, guys. Now we got some culling to do now. We gotta figure out what's going on. We gotta figure out what's going on. Hey, how about that? Everybody on live watching, huh? Save this school. My, when I found it, I was like, this. maybe this would be my day four school that I can go catch some fish on. So far, it's been good. I caught a lot of those fish on a white chatterbait and I was catching a lot of them. And they were, they were decent fish. The problem was they were skinny and, and, and they weren't feeding good there for some reason. Like there wasn't much, much bait. So these fish were real thin. They were real post spawn in August. So I don't think it was a real close to the spawn, but they were, they were just skinny. And like some of the other fish I was catching, those largemouth were a lot fatter, especially up in that deeper grass because they were feeding on bigger shad, of course. So, you know, it, you know, when you, when you add up the couple mistakes that I made, left some, yeah, I left six pounds on the table probably. Of, of mistakes that I made, right? I made. You know, it's one thing when a fish gets off. I'm gonna lose a lot of fish. You've seen me lose quite a few this year. It's been a weird year. It is what it is. I'm okay with it. We're done with it. We're gonna move on. Next year's gonna be great. I'm not gonna, we're just, we're past all that. But when you lose a fish because A, you break your line because you didn't check your line or you didn't change your line recently or redo your knot or you don't set the hook properly or you try to boat swing a fish that doesn't need to be boat swung, those are, those are my, that's my fault. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take ownership of that when it hurts a little bit. It would have put me in contention to maybe win this tournament, second or third for sure. But, but all in all, a good event, okay? It was a great event, looking forward to it. And I'm thinking, guys, here's what I wanna do. I want you to drop me a comment, let me know if you wanna hear it. Think about doing a 2020 super extended version of the whole season. We'll break down the tournaments from the very start of the year, Palatka, to again, right now, where we're finishing this one up. And I want to kind of go through some of that video work with you guys and show you kind of what I did right, what I did wrong, break down the season. So I think that would be a kind of a cool video. So if you guys would like to see that, let me know, drop a comment down below. And um, I want to say a huge shout out to my sponsors, Favorite Fishing, of course, with all my rods, P-Line with all my line, Guggen Baits with all my lures. Uh, really good stuff, guys. It, it's, it's been having, having great partners uh, throughout the year allows me to really focus on fishing. We've made the Bassmasters Classic, so we don't have to sit on the bubble and wait and wonder, wait for someone to win a tournament. We're in the Bassmasters Classic for next year. Super excited about that. The quest to still win a blue trophy is still alive, guys. We're gonna have to pull something off special next year. But hey, looking at the schedule, I'm super excited about that. Guys, we start here in Florida on Lake Okeechobee, right here in my backyard. We, we go right from there to Seminole and uh, pretty much all the events next year. I like, I, 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 as far as the schedule goes, I'm excited about it. And before we close this video out, guys, I wanna say one other thing. A lot of people have been asking me, what sunglasses are you wearing? I've been wearing Bahio. If you've been watching me, wearing my Bahio glasses. And um, they sent me a new pair. Check this out, guys. This is cool. This pair is called Vega, okay? Green mirror glass. Everybody asks me what lens I, I like. I like the green mirror. I like the glass. And uh, check out this frame. That is awesome, right? It's got that like tortoise green. I'm liking it a lot. The Bahios are super clear. Uh, they're in 750 retailers right now, guys. So all you have to do is start looking for them. You're gonna find a Bahio case at a tackle shop near you. Check them out, try them on. Uh, what you're gonna find is they're, they're super clear. They're, they're obviously made extremely well. Um, you're, you're gonna like the way they look. Everybody that tries them on, they go, they go nuts on them. Um, so it's really good stuff. They, they have really great causes that they're, they're about. 
They're all about the environment. They're all about giving back. Um, good stuff. These are the ones I wear a lot. Other people were asking me about this one. This one is called Boneville with the blue frame. Again, that is a blue, no, that is a green mirror on those there. And um, yeah, there we go, guys. So thank you again for watching this 2020. Hopefully you got something out of it. I always do. Thank you for the support this year. Drop some comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see coming up. And we've got a lot of cool videos coming your way, guys. And again, huge shout out to Mobile Dovac. Check out the link in the description, guys. Mission Unstoppable. And that is it. 2020s are done for now, guys. Time to go to the Keys, do a little saltwater fishing. Hillary's got some high school stuff starting up. Hey, also, before I leave, one more thing, one more thing. These 2020s are like a little housekeeping deal. I like to talk about the products I use and all the different things that we got going on. Hillary has been doing some amazing work with her tournament videos. I really want to encourage all of you guys to check out The Real Hillary Sue. We're going to drop that link in the description as well. You can follow her along with all of her adventures and her high school stuff, which just started up again. And uh, super proud of her. She's a senior this year. This will be her last go around on the high school stuff and then off to some college stuff. She's looking at Auburn. She's looking at FSU. She's looking at a couple other colleges out there, guys. And her main focus, FYI, is colleges that have great fishing teams. So do me a favor, drop some comments down below and let me know some colleges around the country that are kicking butt in the college world. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you. Bam!